Before starting this benchmark video, I have to make an important announcement. From November to December, I want to focus on only benchmarking games from the 2000s, because I haven't tested as many games from that period as I would have liked to on this channel, and I'm quite desperate to benchmark a few great and quite familiar old classics, which means that during the last two months of 2022, I also won't be accepting requests for games that are made after 2009. I might make one or two exceptions, when I feel like to, or if one of you kids start spamming my comment sections, so that's the announcement, let's finally start this benchmark video. Way back in April, I made a video of trying to run GTA 5 on the Intel Celeron N2840, Intel HD Graphics Bay Trail, and only 4GB of RAM. You can tell that I was quite disappointed, just by looking at its thumbnail. However, that video would end up kickstarting my career of torturing the absolute living hell out of my old Celeron N2840 laptop. Shortly after making the GTA 5 video, I ran GTA 4, this would become my second seller in N2840 video, I also revisited it as the 50 subscriber special, and we determined that it's actually kinda playable, which is really impressive, considering that this is the worst PC port ever, so now, for Halloween, I thought, why not give GTA 5 a second chance? Sure it's newer than GTA 4, but look at how people praise it for being so well optimized, which is no surprise, given that even the G100 can run it, no wonder people consider it to be the best PC port ever, so if the G100 can run it, there's no way it runs as badly as it did in my April GTA 5 video, surely the Intel Celeron N2840 and Intel HD Graphics Bay Trail can run it decently with low enough settings even with 4GB RAM, let's find out. Now. Now, one thing that I didn't mention in my April video is, how did I manage to get GTA 5 to launch, as it turns out, some people can't even launch this game with these specs, so follow me, go to the game's config file, which, in case you don't know, is located in documents, Rockstar Games, GTA 5, settings.xml. In the config file. Scroll down until you find DX version, change it from 2 to 0, and that's how you get GTA 5 to start. In addition, I'm also using the Memory Reduct app, because let's be real here, GTA 5 is a big and modern open world game, so it's logical that it would use a lot of RAM, even if it's super optimized. Not to mention that my boot partition is located on a slow hard drive instead of SSD. Now let's go to the game. So here we are. I will test it first at the laptop's native resolution and the so-called normal settings, which are actually the low settings. The texture quality is set to high, because from my experience, it makes the game useless RAM for some weird and unknown reason. The V-Sync is at half because without it, the game takes around 15 minutes to load, and setting it to half reduces the loading time to 3 or 4 minutes with the Celeron N2840. But then again we will probably hit the 30 FPS limit set by the V-Sync anyway. After all, this is the best PC port ever, so, yeah, time for the moment of truth. Um, guys, I think my expectations were way, way too high, this is terrible, it's alright though, if I'm not wrong, GTA 4 gets the same FPS at 1366 by 768 yet GTA 5's low settings look much better than GTA 4's low settings. So at least it's a good looking slideshow. Let's see if Michael can do something at 6 FPS. Oh I see this lady right there. Let's punch her. Uh, 
See, you can still do stuff at 6 FPS in this game, so I consider this a win. Okay, in all of seriousness, let's try it out at 800 by 600. At 800 by 600, it should run way better. GTA 4 got 20 FPS average at 800 by 600, and that was without mods, so I still have high expectations. Anyway, let's go. What in the actual fuck? We are still getting single digit FPS. And now our CPU is severely bottlenecking the integrated graphics, which is always a sign that your CPU is as powerful as a NASA supercomputer's one. Though at least the graphics still look good. Sure they aren't as sharp as before, because 800 by 600, but they still look good in my opinion you know. Oh, what's that? I accidentally started counting the FPS. So guess what that means, we have to get in our shiny red car, and endure an absolute load of pain, and yes you guessed it, I will be taking crisps route, so I'll have to give him another credit, by the way did the game crash? Oh. Oh never mind it was just a massive stutter, and now our 1% low figure is at goddamn zero, hey, at least the single digit FPS to actually give us a huge advantage compared to when you play with really high FPS, and that is, you have more time to react in, you know, critical situations, we are now going fast as you can see, we are truly feeling the trill as you can tell, oh here's a sharp turn let's be careful. Oh crap I shouldn't have gone that fast, god please don't. Jesus, that was brutal. Michael seems to be fine though, so we can continue with our painful journey. You know what, if you're a photographer, you might be fine with playing like that. Yeah that's a good idea, if you think that the 800x600 low settings look good, and you want to take some screenshots, well, go for it I think. Where did the buildings on the left go? The road is also glitching out. Oh shit. Michael is still fine, it's pedestrian avoiding time, this should be easy, like I said the terrible FPS did give us more time to react, so this won't be that big of a challenge. Our red car is defying gravity. See, we avoided the pedestrians. I told you this would be easy. A big jump is coming. Just imagine if the car explodes there. Okay, thankfully it's not going to explode, now, did I break it, that's the real question. I think I didn't, so we can proceed to climb the bushy hill, and meet our white boy called Jack apparently. At this point, I'm probably gonna get reported by some kid for copying crisps lines, there he is. And I think he absolutely hates the Intel Celeron N2840. I agree with him. Finally I wonder if Bob, or whoever is here. No he isn't. By the way the game runs slightly better in bushy areas, weird. So yeah, 7 FPS average with texture loading issues, well, it's what you get when you try to run GTA 5 on a CPU that's worse than a laptop core 2 duo from 2006, I don't know what else to say.
Hey, don't lose hope. There's something we can do to hopefully fix the terrible lag. Again, go to the game's config file. In it, there's a line called shadow quality. If you lower it from 1 to 0, you can disable the game's shadows completely, which usually helps with running GTA 5 on a nutter potato of a PC. So after changing that number, in the game's settings, if you go to shadow quality, you will find out that it now says undefined, meaning that we have successfully disabled those pesky shadows. So let's see if it's actually playable now. Never mind. It still runs like a load of crap. Hey, at least when we look up. Or down, we can hit. Um. 20 FPS I think. Oh dear god. To be fair the game now runs a bit faster compared to before, but at the same time though, as it runs a bit faster, the stuttering issues caused by the CPU and the 4GB RAM are way more noticeable. In addition to this, not only has the texture issue not been fixed, but in fact it's the opposite, turns out, now even more stuff are disappearing on the screen as we drive fast. I'm quite sad guys, I really thought disabling the shadows would save this, but then you remember that the Intel Celeron N2840 is worse than a 2006 Core 2 Duo, and since GTA 5 is apparently more demanding than what you expected, after seeing those comments praising its epic optimizations, you get this stuttery unstable mess. If you want to defy gravity in GTA 5, well, just buy an old laptop with Intel Celeron, thank me later. It's pedestrian avoiding time part 2 electric boogaloo. Big jump, big jump, big jump. Oh wow. Damn, that was a perfect landing right there, and a perfect run overall. Oh for god's sake, of course you had to ruin my perfect run. God damn people trying to sabotage my work man. I hate them. Um, where's Jack, or whoever he is? Seems like the Celeron proved to be too powerful for him to load this time around, by the way. 9 FPS average with no shadows, and 0-1% low again. 999% playable haha, <laughs> just kidding. We are far from done though, oh no. Turns out that there are some more stuff you can tweak in the config file. Let me show you. First, you have these LOD scale parameters. LOD scale. Pedestrian LOD bus, vehicle LOD bus, and maximum LOD scale. Then you have this reflection mid blur line right here. If you set it to false, you can disable some of the game's reflections. So let's do it. Now let's mess with the LOD parameters. The lowest that you can set them to is minus 2. However setting the vehicle LOD bias and maximum LOD scale to that breaks the game. But now though, I'm going to lower all of them to only minus 0.4. Make sure that there are 5 zeros after the 4s. This will kinda reduce the draw distance, and therefore reduce the stress onto the CPU. So let's go back to the game. I've now also enabled the frame scaling mode in the advanced settings. I set it to 0.834. The main resolution is still at 600p, meaning that we will be running the game at 667 by 500. Oh, it's still running poorly, but at least it's no longer running at single digit FPS. You can't really tell that the draw distance has been reduced, however you can definitely notice the effect of setting the reflection mid blur to false, because now our red car is no longer shining, and it looks like it has no windows, 
So far, this definitely feels more playable than what we saw previously. Sure the FPS are still not exactly acceptable, even for me, and it's kinda stuttery, but you can definitely feel the effect of the reduced LOD bus, and, oh are you kidding me, the texture loading issue is still there, even with the reduced draw distance, this seller and still can't keep up and the 1% low is once again at zero, because it's still stuttering like hell actually, so, yeah, still not playable, got, I really wonder, what it takes to make this game playable with these specs, like, I'm starting to panic a little bit, I really want to make GTA 5 at least acceptably playable for someone with low standards in this video, and I'm starting to get worried, that I won't be able to achieve it guys, it's pedestrian avoiding time part 3 seller in law, I don't count this as a hit. Not so brutal. Now, I hope that at least Jack spawns to greet us, otherwise I might go crazy at this point. And, he refuses to spawn, because the Celeron is scared of him. So yeah, 11 FPS average and 0-1% low of course, well at least the average is now a double digit one unlike beforehand, so I'm going to give credit to the N2840 for that, still, I'm not going to end this battle until we get 15 FPS average, so let's begin, the quest for 15 FPS, we are going to lower down the LOD bias parameter some more. Watch me carefully, the maximum LOD scale will be greatly reduced to minus 0.8. Scrolling up in the config file, the LOD scale will go to minus 0.7, and both the pedestrian and vehicle LOD biases will be lowered slightly to minus 0.5. So that's basically it this time around. Well I also lowered the frame scaling mode to 0.667, meaning that we are now gonna run GTA at 537 by 400. Damn, you can now already notice the really low draw distance as a result of the further reduced LOD bus. So far, we are actually touching the desired 15 FPS, though when we start driving fast, it will probably stutter like hell regardless. But let's go. This lady pretty much asked for it, anyway, so far it's actually not so bad, never mind it's still the worst thing ever, like, I'm actually starting to believe, that there's nothing you can do to get rid of these slowdowns and terrible stutters in this game, if you have 4GB RAM, and your boot partition is on a hard drive, and of course, if your CPU is as weak as the N2840, you know what, I think some people might also point the blame at the operating system, yeah it might also be because of the Windows 10 you know, this is actually the lowest draw distance that I tested GTA 5 with in my April video, and guess what, it ran like a load of bullshit, and it still runs like a load of bullshit. By the way, would you believe that I managed to complete around 30 missions of the game playing with these FPS and stutters? Yeah, I actually tried to enjoy GTA 5 like that. Oh you absolute moron. Anyway, who knows, maybe a small percentage of you guys might be fine playing like this. It's pedestrian avoiding time part 4 absolute utter pain. I mean, he didn't move out of the way, so I had no choice.
I know it's obvious that Jack won't spawn, but let's climb the hill anyway. We failed to make GTA 5 run at 15 FPS average, as to be expected given the severe stuttering, so that means that the quest continues. Since apparently this Celeron is too bad to run GTA 5 at 15 FPS even with those 2001 GTA 3 graphics, we are going to make the graphics look worse than GTA 3's. So, the maximum LOD scale will go down to minus 1, the LOD scale will go to minus 1.3, and the vehicle LOD bias will be lowered slightly to minus 0.6, the frame scaling mode will go down to 0.5, the lowest that you can set it to, meaning that we will be running this mess at the wonderful 400 by 300 resolution. Jesus Christ, you can already notice the terrible draw distance here, like, look at the table, and this chair, holy crap, and that 300p resolution sure looks sharp. Also, I noticed something weird with these settings, when you look down or up, the frame time graph turns to crap, otherwise it isn't crap, at least when not driving, wit, must be a bandwidth issue or something, oh my god, look at how close from us do the vehicles appear now. Yeah, this might give us a bit of a challenge, well, so far, the ride is going quite smoothly actually, I'm surprised that I'm still able to drive well even with this draw distance, so I guess you can still drive around even like this you know, oh shit. Of course it eventually had to happen, can't really blame him honestly. I think she's fine, it's pedestrian avoiding time part 5 fuck this Celeron, and oh god, not only do the cars appear really close from us, and so do the pedestrians, so we have to drive very carefully now. Don't worry, he's also fine. So guys, even with these graphics, you can't get 15 FPS average with these specs. That's right, even with these PS1 graphics, it's still an absolute mess, only with the Intel Celeron N2840. That was a perfect landing again. What the hell is happening with Jack? For some reason Bob and the other one finally decided to appear. And now the Nintendo 64 police wants to have a conversation. Let's go to the parking lot. I bet the police won't look for me there. Now it's time to try out the final stage of the quest. First, both the LOD scale and pedestrian LOD bias will go to the lowest possible value, which is minus 2. Then, the vehicle LOD bias will go to minus 0.75, the maximum LOD scale will remain the same, otherwise I would completely break the game, and finally, I will lower the resolution even further, as if 300p wasn't low enough, 
Let's lower the game's main resolution to 640x400, and for this to work properly, you have to set the windowed value to 2. This will make the game run in windowed borderless mode, otherwise it would revert itself to 800x600. So let's go back to the game. As you can probably tell, the game's main resolution is now at 640x400. Looks pretty small right? Well, if we lower the desktop resolution to the main resolution that we made the game run in, we can actually make it full screen. I also kept the frame scaling mode at 0.5, meaning that we will be running the game in the infamous 200p resolution. Wow, look at how graphically advanced our boy Michael looks now, yeah, he totally doesn't look like a Minecraft or a 2006 Roblox character now, I think this will become a beautiful video thumbnail, to showcase the beauty of the outrageously low settings. Perhaps we can finally achieve the desired 15 FPS. I would be clenching my fist in the air if the quest finally achieves its objective. However, if the Intel Celeron N2840 still fails to achieve 15 FPS average, even with these settings, then I will declare the quest a failure, because, if I try to lower the rest of the LOD parameters even further, I would make the game completely unplayable anyway, so I swear if I still don't get 15 FPS, You know what's even weirder, GTA 4, the worst PC port, actually runs much much better than this, even at 800 by 600 with only a command line applied and nothing else, so if the worst PC port can run alright, why is the best PC port a completely unstable mess even with these ridiculous settings, like, I seriously don't get the logic dear Celeron, the worst PC port ever running much better than the best PC port ever, it's pedestrian avoiding time part 6 I want 15 FPS average please. I mean, she shouldn't have spawned in my way in the first place, by the way, the average is currently at 13 FPS, so I'm starting to fear that the quest is doomed to fail. Hopefully this time Jack won't just appear for a few seconds and disappear off the face of earth like in the last run. He did it again, I guess the reason he does it is because, as soon as he sees the Intel Celeron N2840, he teleports back to safety in his secret universe, and I can see why he does it, because guess what, the final average is still at 14 FPS, so guess what, I sadly have to declare, that the quest for 15 FPS officially failed. So, at this point, I don't really know what else to say honestly, I think, the craziest thing that came out of all of this pain that I had to endure over the last 25 minutes is not the fact that it runs so poorly, but the fact that, on the Intel Celeron N2840, the worst PC port ever runs better than the best PC port ever. There's one last thing to find out, before ending the first part of the Halloween special, how do the lowest settings that GTA 5 technically allows you to use look, let's push the limits.